Good morning. Mr. President, on behalf of all of us at the Chrysler Corporation, especially our people here in St. Louis, I want to welcome you today. By now, I think you can see why we consider this plant a symbol of the new Chrysler Corporation.
It's clean, it's efficient, it's modern, and I'd stack it up against any assembly plant anywhere in the world. I wish you people were more enthused this morning. <laughs> but even better than that, our workers here have the kind of pride in their work that once made our country's economy the envy of the world. They put out the best quality cars in the whole Chrysler system, and that's a distinction that doesn't come easily because every one of our plants has made a tremendous commitment to quality. As you already know, we're adding two new car lines here this year, our new turbocharged sports cars, the Dodge Daytona and the Chrysler Laser, and then we're adding the luxury Chrysler New Yorker. That represents an investment by Chrysler of about 150 million bucks, and it'll boost our capacity here in St. Louis by another 225,000 cars a year. And it will mean more than 3,000 new jobs with an annual payroll of about $90 million. But as interest rates have come down, We've seen some new life in this economy. For example, in the first 20 days of this year, we see that trend continue. And we're also optimistic because we've seen a growing spirit of cooperation between government and business and labor who have worked so hard to bring these new jobs to Missouri. By the way, with us today also are Congressman Bill Emerson, Gene Taylor, Tom Coleman, and Bob Young. I'm also talking about the spirit shown by the members of the UAW in St. Louis. These men and women are helping to make this plant a model of how American industry ought to operate. And of course, I'm talking about the kind of dedicated men. And will you please join me in welcoming the President of the United States? Thank you. Thank you very much. Governor Bond, Senator Danforth, the members of the, the Congress representing you in Washington, Mr. Kayakoka, friend here who has been driving us around this plant. I've been having a little nostalgia here because I used to do some plant tours when I was doing a show called the General Electric Theater. I used to stand before groups of the employees going through some of the 139 plants, and for want of something better to do, I'd tell them to ask questions. And uh, one of the questions I used to get the most was, how does it feel to see yourself on the late, late movie? And I said, it's like looking at a son you never knew you had. But I can't tell you how good it is to see an assembly line producing American cars, and especially Chrysler's. It's a... I... The last time I was in a plant, it was the Chrysler plant in Detroit, and it was during the campaign. I know the Chrysler employees here in Fenton have had a rough time the last few years, but I want you to know that, and I really mean it, America is on the mend, and both the economy and Chrysler are on the comeback trail. Thank heaven I can say those words that auto workers love to hear, which is, auto sales are up. And that's having its effect. Now, Lee has told me that 1,700 of your fellow auto workers are being called back to their jobs when a second shift begins in July. 1,500 more will be coming back when Plant 2 resumes operation in the summer. And all in all, as he told you, Chrysler is investing $150 million to get these two facilities working again. The other auto companies are beginning to feel the recovery as well. I, you won't mind my mentioning them. Ford Hazelwood plant is bringing on another shift, and so is that other little company, General Motors, and they're calling back some employees. An economic recovery is something like a seedling. For a while, it grows underground, and you don't see it above ground. And then it shoots up and seems sprouting all over the place. And that's what we're starting to see around the nation right now. The shoots of an economic recovery are beginning to push up through the recession 
with its attending unemployment. It's no accident that the leading in economic indicators are up for eight of the last nine months. What we've been trying to do hasn't been too well understood by some, or maybe there's others that didn't want to admit it, but that we want to lay a solid foundation for long-term growth. We want an economic base so that you won't have to go through the pain again that you've experienced. And I believe that we've laid that kind of a foundation. Remember what an enemy inflation used to be? It was murderous. Well, inflation has been brought down from 12.4% two years ago to 3.9%. And we've taken the lead in reducing the interest rates, which have been poison as far as car sales are concerned. The prime rate was 21 and a half. It's now down to 11, but that's not low enough. We're going to keep on pushing on that and inflation until they're both down some more. I know the auto companies and the UAW are doing everything they can to get things turned around as well. I wanted to stop by here today and say that the American people know that the United States or the U.S. auto workers are still the greatest auto workers in the world, bar none. I know, too, that you've had here in what's going on the cooperation of Governor Bond and the state government of Missouri, and that's the way it should be also, that government shouldn't be a heavy hand in your pocket and holding you down. It should be cooperating and helping to let private enterprise do the job that it can do in keeping people at work. With your help and Chrysler's help and the help of so many other hardworking people, and companies, we're going to get this economy humming like one of those Chrysler engines I saw you just stuffing in the body back there. I know there's been a lot of misunderstanding, and I know that many of you have been told a lot of things about uh, what we're supposed to be doing or not doing. Very simply, my idea of what the federal government should be doing is reducing the cost of government to the lowest practical point at which you can leave the most of your earnings in your pocket that is possible and still do and fill the responsibilities of government. And with that, to stop this inflation binge, which has been the longest continued worldwide inflation the world has ever known, and that has been the cause of the high interest rates, bring them down reduce the regulations and the restrictions that have been hampering business and adding to the cost of the product, make us once again competitive in the world market. Now, if you can find a better program than that, you buy it. Uh, I just wanted you to know I'm not above stealing a good line when I know here one. But uh, it's been a great pleasure to be here. I know we're due at some other stops now and have to get going, but thank you all and God bless you. President of the United States.
This RCGA meeting it is scheduled level and in Washington. We have published all is tied to the strength of the dynamic small and the strength of America firsthand. He saw it in the streets of the small town and great privilege of presenting the pres President of the United States, Ronald Reagan. until that moment. It was beautiful. And uh, I would have enjoyed it. It's a created in firms in America with fewer than 100 employees. If we're to remain true to America, we must preserve it. Just one week ago, I addressed the Congress, and I told them that thanks to the courage, the patience, Sometimes statistics seem mighty and personal. Well, today I saw a different kind of proof. And only the people were saying, this has got to stop. There seems to be a little confusion about its future. It isn't easy, and it isn't good, but it'll work. Because if the design of the problems of their groups, rather than the single most depressed area of small business in the United States of America. The question I, we have for you is three parts, basically. One, uh, is there anything that you can do to help the small businessmen recover on a short-term basis from the double whammy of both the flood and the docks and the contamination situation in the, t in the Times Beach area? Two, would you be willing to allow a delegation from Times Beach to speak with you on, on the long-term solution to the terrible problem we have in Times Beach. And three, would you be willing to appoint a citizen from Times Beach to your special task force that did to deal with the Times Beach situation? Uh, to the third one, yes. Uh, to the second one, I think that I've been kept pretty well aware and abreast of the problem that I know is there. Let me, some others have 
either return to their homes or are living with friends or relatives. We're doing everything we can, and the community cooperative project that has been... Would you be willing to accept that now? I sure. guarantee you it's not dioxin contaminated. Uh, I'm, I'd be very delighted to, and you can just Thank bring you. it down, hand it to somebody down here on this side of the, of the rope. Mr. President, to your right, sir. Perseverance in bringing to final passage that the unborn child is not a living human being, <clears throat> then we have to opt in favor that it is alive and it is killing to do what is being done today. And that we only condone in self-defense. <laughs> this first few words there about what happened here with the increase in sales and all and seeing all of you, I'm going back to Washington convinced more than ever that there isn't anything the people of this country can't do when the people get together and decide it needs to be done. Thank you again, and God bless you. Thank you, Mr. President. Mr. Howard.